what time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know, just where it's at. Right down there. Go hit it. And it's time to follow my Instagram, my Geekly Amanda, G-E-E-K-L-Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. Make sure to follow me there, too. It's time to get this review started. It is season nine of the Mahabharat review, and so much is happening, and I am like hooked. I am hooked. So last we saw, remember, Draupadi left. She was exiled out the 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 kingdom of Drupad and everything. And now this starts off right, kind of with that, because he's got his son, who's like destined. He was born to just kill that uh, Drona. The, the guru Drona. I always like Drona. Drona, he's a good teacher and everything. Poor Drona. He just wants friendship. That's all he wanted with the Drupad. Well, anyway, so he shows up, right? And here comes the Drupad with his new son, talking about, let's kill him. Then it just gets interesting, because you know what? Krishna ain't gonna let that happen. Oh, Krishna shows up. He's like, oh no, this ain't going down today. Not today, Drupad, not today. <laughs> Let's take a little bit. I got some scenes this uh, um, to re to just show y'all and watch together. This is when Lord Krishna saves the Drona, cause he was kind of uh, y'all ready to do this. Let's go. Look at him. See, he was gonna behead him right there. And remember, he he just kneeled and said, "This is my destiny. Go ahead and behead me." So here comes Krishna. Not today, Drupad. <laughs> Look at Krishna. And he's got his big Macy through there. Krishna ain't having to do that. Krishna ain't having to He's like, you're going to come after me with your army? Mm-mm. 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 He was mad. Remember he was... He's like, no, this is the fate. But Krishna says, nope. <laughs> and you're gonna doubt Krishna in his in his big old maze? Look at that. He's like, take him out. Take him out. We're gonna show you the power of, of Krishna today. Look at that. You can't fight it, too fast. You can't fight it. All the weapons are gone. All the weapons. He doesn't make them all go to sleep. But they, and now when it's like, I was like, what you gonna do, Drew Pad? What you gonna do? You you talking to Lord Krishna now? You better just obey. <laughs> you better just you better just get down with the righteousness. That's what I'm saying. Who's gonna save you now? Well, we know who saves him. The one he was mean to the most. The one he just exiled out the kingdom and everything. Right here is my girl Drupati saves her father. Let's look at this. Go. This don't have the subtitles, but I remember what he was saying. He's like, who's gonna who's gonna stand up for you? Now? You're, you're dumb for Drupad. Remember, he was gonna come after him. And I love how it was like so slow motion. <laughs> Don't you? Here comes the mace. Here comes Drupati. Saves her father. After all he did to her, she's gonna stay in the front of there and protect her dad. Krishna knew. Krishna knew. Look at him. And I think that's when Drupad woke up and was like, she's the only one that went and saved him too. He realized she's the only one that went there and saved him. He realized he's like that that son that he had everything banked on sure didn't save him. <laughs> that son didn't. He didn't jump up and and was gonna take Lord Krishna's maze in him. No, it was Drupadi. And look, you can even see on on the Drupad's face at that time, like he was shocked. He was just like. After he, because he knows after how he treated her, exiled her and everything, she was the one there for him. That's unconditional love. 
That's why that's why Drupadi's the best. <laughs> that is. He should be he should be so thankful that that's his daughter. He wises up. He does. I know he does. He realizes that Lord Krishna talks some sense into him. Takes on her Drupadi, but she don't want to come back, does she? <laughs> she was like, I ain't coming back. Lord Krishna had to go and talk her into it. She's like, oh no, I'm done with them. I'm done with them. They done exile me. I don't want to come back. But Lord Krishna's like, you got to come back. And then they start to play in the law. So I can never say that name. What To find her a husband. I think that's when I'm going to get jealous. I am. Because right now, Arjun, I got a little jealous when they had Krishna's sister there. And then I found out they're going to get married later on. I got a little jealous now. And it's going to be a conflict because I love me some Drupadi. I love Drupadi. But Arjun, oh, <laughs> I'm going to be jealous. I am. Speaking of Arjun, Pandavas, they're over there still in that forest with the ogres. And they're with that one girl. They don't know she's an ogre. But she's trying to lure them to the village to eat because they know they're going to have a plentiful meal with Beam. <laughs> they know. I was like, look at Big Beam. They could eat a couple years off of him. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be mean. I love me some Beam. He's one of my favorites. But she does. and But that's the thing, too. Like, she's supposed to lure him. And what's her name? Himbada. She, and, but she can't. She, she can't even resist the charms of the Pandava. She can't. When you got a good heart like that, people are just attracted to you. And then her and Beam start having a little eating contest. I was like, look at her. He takes some, she takes some. And they start scarfing it down. And then she lets out that big old burp. And everybody was like, what? <laughs> and then Beam goes, Bleh. I was like, oh, Beam. That's it. Y'all are flirting now. Y'all are having a little burp off flirting contest right there. I thought it was cute. I thought it was cute. And then I got sad because... They find out like, well, that her brother, when they're sleeping, he brings her over there and she's gone and Arjun's on the lookout and, and the other brother, Yeesh, or you're, Yush, I like to, it's the Y guy, it's the oldest one, Yush, I kind of just call him Yush, I'm probably not even close to what it, but it starts with a Y. Anyway, <laughs> they go off to find her, you know, then they can't, and she's talking to the brother, the brother's like, what's taking you so long? Bring them to eat us, blah, 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 blah. So she goes back. And then they, then she starts luring them to, to the village after they wake up, right? But you should, and, and Arjun, they already have it in their mind. I already knew. I was like, they know something's up. They're always looking at each other, like giving each other little glances. I was like, they know something's up with her already. But then she starts luring them to that village and they start, remember, there's Beam with his nose. He's like, what's that smell? Somebody's cooking something. <laughs> Beam knows. Beam can be lured to the village with the smells of the food cooking. And then, but then I was, she was like, stop. She, she has feelings for him, the beam and the family. I mean, I don't doubt it. How can you not resist those, those, just the good per people they are and their charm and, and how helpful they are and how good to they are to their mother. That's all, that's the kind of man all the girls look for. It is. They have the qualities that all the girls would be lucky to have, th those brothers. But then that's when it just revealed, right? That's when it revealed that she's one of the ogres and, and and you know, they had to beam, went head to head with the king of the ogres. Oh, I have that, that scene. That was crazy. Y'all want to watch this together? When beam goes head to head with them, let's do it. Ready? Go. Oh, it's going. It's going to take a little bit. It's going to take a little bit. Right here. They got this little intro, but this is all I could find, this little intro here from this channel. All right, here we go. Ready? Beam versus Hidiba. Look at him. He was licking his lips. He wants to eat me. Look at that. Beam ain't playing, but she's nervous. Cause she loves the beam. Oh, look, take him down. Beam, you got this. You got it, beam. Oh, oh, I Did y'all get nervous there? 
I was like, oh no. I knew it. I knew it. Then nobody's gonna take out me. Oh, look at him. He's got moves too. He had moves. Then he got wrestling moves. He started doing suplexes. Look, see? He started doing his wrestling moves. I was like, oh no, you may be mad now. Right? I was like, you may be mad. Look at through the through the wall of rocks. And then full suplex. <laughs> full suplex. Dead. That was a way. That was a harsh way to die too. Right on his neck, broke his neck, and oh. That was a harsh way to die. But look, he don't even know it now. Remember, he didn't even know. It's like, now, look, you the king of the ogres now, Beam. You the king of the ogres there. He wasn't even realizing. He's like, what? Why they calling me? Why they calling me, uh, your highness and all that? And our Jew and Beam's a little slow sometimes. He is. Good thing he's got the smart brothers to take care of him. Because he's a, uh, he has a one-track mind on eating. <laughs> that's, that's Beam, my one-track mind on eating. He's a little slow on these things. But they had to tell him. He's the king of the ogres now. Then it went in this whole thing because the girl, she, the, the girl ogre, Hib, Hibda or whatever her name is, she's like, I want to marry him. And and then she went off and was crying. And then Cunty went and made her feel better. I was like, you going to fix it, Cunty. Cunty always fixes it. And she, and they made the agreement. She was like, oh, you can marry Beam and and have a baby that will be blessed, you know, and he can become a son that become king of the ogres. And that's just what happened, right? They got married. They had a baby. They were looking. I was like, they've been there a while. Because after they, remember after she had that baby, our Jew, all of them had the long hair, beards. I was like, oh, they need a good haircut. <laughs> they need a good shave and haircut. They've been in that ogre forest for a while. And then something crazy happened. Because they were like, well, bless your son, make him the king. So with the blood, and so Bean did that and blessed his son with the blood. Then all this magic happened. And then his little baby is like 40 years old. I was like, <laughs> what a bald head. He still had the bald head. Remember he named him. I, I didn't get the joke. I think he was like, you, your head shines. Because remember they're like, name your son, Beam. And he was like, well, his head shines like a pot. So I'm going to name him, and he named, I guess it, I thought it meant something, maybe his name meant pot or something like that, or bald head, something like that, because everybody was kind of laughing, I was like, oh, I don't get the joke, I don't know what that means, but it was sweet, because now they got the, the son, and he's going to be the king of the ogres, and 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 now he leaves, which is kind of sad, because being he's married to the girl, now he leaves the ogre girl, but they're going to take care of him, and remember, he was like, the son, before he left, he was like, beam. Father, you just say my name like three times and I will be there for you. So they got always have to, look, the ogres always going to have the Pandavas backs now. So they got the ogres on their side now. And ogres don't play. They'll go eat everybody. <laughs> and they can do that illusion and all that. Oh, no. Ogres, they got the ogres on their side. They're done for. The Pandavas. But that's the thing. The Pandavas, wherever they go, they make friends. They, people just see how righteous they are and how good of people they are and they just want to uh, go to them, right? So they leave the forest. <sighs> then over here, what do we have over, happening over here? Because now they're planning the Drupadis get married and they sent like invitations out and now that me and the mean prince over there wants to be crowned, crown, be crowned the prince so he can go to this Swarvar or whatever it's called. And, and they're going to do it. I was like, how come he's, they know he was behind trying to kill the Pandavas too. Why are they never punished? This is why they always bad. They never have repercussions. They never got punished for that. What, what did they get? You tried to, you, people think they're actually dead, right? But you, they're not. But you tried to kill your first beam once when he was younger. You already poisoned him. Then you tried to kill all the Pandavas and Kunti. And you are, you still just, now you're being, your price to pay for that is being crown prince. This is why they never learn. This is why. 
Uh, they don't have any repercussions for doing anything bad. And until they get some kind of repercussions, I mean, I, they didn't even exile them. They're going to get theirs. That fate's going to happen. They're going to get theirs. I'm just waiting for it. We're only on season nine still. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to get theirs, but I'm sure before they get theirs, I'm going to be mad many times for the things they do. I know. I already know one thing I'm going to get mad about. <laughs> I already know a couple things I'm going to get mad about. I'm excited for next season because we're going to see. That's, oh, that's the scene I even reacted to before where it's our June's perfect shot. I know that's in the next season, so I can't wait for that. Them trying to win Drapati's hand. Ah, oh, although I'm going to be jealous. But we'll see. All right, let me know what y'all think. Comments, thumbs, all that. Until next time, mwah.